Sometime around February of last year, Meow and Cookie 395 started out on a mission. A mission to ask Moon Kitty to do a video about Brackenfur. It's been over a full year now, with seemingly nearly 70 attempts already taken, the day has finally arrived. We're mini-talking about Brackenfur. Not because it got the most votes, but because Moon Kitty always reads the video comments. You'd think Brackenfur wouldn't exactly be a mini-talking subject, but eh, he doesn't do much. Okay, sure, he's there. He's very technically there for every book in the main series, barring Dawn of the Clans, but Brackenfur is just a good, strong, noble warrior. His notable events outside of the main series line up to just about one or two situations, and if anything, his role in the main series is largely over by the time he takes his first apprentice. Not that this video will be super short or anything, because he's been in every single main timeline book. He's still alive. Brackenfur is an unnamed kitten in Into the Wild, much like all other kittens in Into the Wild. His sister Cinderpaw is actually described in some detail, but all we really know is that these kits were either in a litter of four, or Frostfur is one of those cats that show up at the shelter with an existing kitten and also pregnant. Which, honestly, actually might have some basis based on the fact that two of these kids get apprenticed long before the other set. Don't fact check me on this, because I don't actually remember to what extent the ages of Brightheart and Thornclaw are actually described, but I, anything's possible. Anyways, Brackenpaw becomes Graystripe's apprentice in Fire and Ice. Compared to his excitable sister Cinderpaw, he's polite and patient. While Graystripe does seem to do a bit of training with his apprentice, eventually it becomes Fireheart's duty to train both. And during the time that Fireheart is training both of them, the apprentice's progress is assessed by the judgmental Tiger Claw, but both of them catch impressive amounts of prey. When Cinderpaw is hurt, Fireheart switches to just training Brackenpaw in both her and Graystripe's absence. Eventually, Graystripe starts being a more active participant again, but he's still missing often. When Fireheart asks Brackenpaw where his mentor is gone, Brackenpaw says, hunting. Just fully tricked by whatever Graystripe's been telling him. In the next book, Brackenpaw expresses some sadness that Graystripe is never around to train him, so Fireheart continues taking him out with him. He bravely saves Cloudkit and Fireheart from a badger and receives a claw injury on his hind leg. Seemingly, it heals pretty quickly. Eventually, Brackenpaw stops asking where Graystripe is entirely, and it's implied that Fireheart has just taken over his training. Later, he's the first to detect WindClan and ShadowClan war parties while out training, and during the following battle, fights well, prompting Fireheart to suggest that Brackenpaw is made a warrior. Blue Star agrees, and he becomes Bracken Fur. He doesn't seem to hold any resentment for his largely absent mentor, and thanks him afterwards. Brackenfur starts hanging out in and around the nursery at this point, as he's really eager to become a mentor himself. This leads him to noticing Snowkit's disability, and Fireheart promises him Snowkit as his apprentice. Soon after being introduced, however, Snowkit is taken by a hawk. Because of this, Fireheart decides that it's only fair to let Brackenfur mentor Tawnykit, but his real reason is to prevent giving her to Sandstorm, who might be targeted by Tigerclaw if she were mentoring the kit. It seems fine that Brackenfur could be targeted by Tigerclaw, though. Um, in line with this, Brackenpaw, I mean Brackenfur, is then tasked with tailing Darkstripe soon after, even as Tawnypaw's mentor in some sort of disaster situation. After it's found that Darkstripe has given Sorrel Kit death berries, he blames himself for not tailing him better. He mopes. In response, Fireheart just has him double down on watching him. Later, he again blames himself when Tawnypaw goes to live in ShadowClan. And then, when the Half-Clan cats come to live in ThunderClan, he is pleased to see that Graystripe has got another apprentice in Stormpaw. For some reason. When he finally sees Tawnypaw, he's upset to see her with Tigerstar and accuses him of stealing her. She doesn't make eye contact. Throughout the first arc, the same few words come up when people think about Brackenfur. Responsible, serious, loyal, sensible. He's humble and quick to blame himself if something goes wrong. He's just good and well-behaved. His largest flaw is really just taking too much blame for bad things happening under his watch. As such, his appearances going forward are largely just him being a reliable member of the clan. He has Whitepaw as his apprentice at the start of the new prophecy, and she stays that way for all six books. During Dawn, he materializes out of the crowd to attack an eagle that tries to take Marshkit during the journey. It's common to assume that he did this because of Snowkit being taken, but Snowkit isn't actually mentioned at all in the text. Not that it isn't a perfectly reasonable headcanon, it's just usually a surprise to people to hear that it isn't actually in the text at all. With Graystripe gone, most of the senior warriors consider him a good option for the next deputy. Brambleclaw thinks about this with dread. Brackenfur is level-headed, brave, and largely flawless in conflict. Brambleclaw doesn't really compare to him from any logical standpoint. 
He starts a problem for Leafpool as well, as Brackenfur and Sorotail's close relationship is starting to make it so that she is losing a close friend to romance. But in both of these conflicts, Brackenfur is just an object. He doesn't have any feelings about them, he probably doesn't even know about them. He's just being used as a tool to, um, be perfect and good and well-respected in such a way that drives attention away from other people. Brackenfur and Sorreltail have four kids. Two of these will live on to have three litters of their own kids. A third, later, will live on and also have her own kids. This is too many kids. When Firestar gets the sign from Leafpool about appointing a new deputy, he says, I almost decided to appoint Brackenfur, he went on. He would be a good deputy, too, and he is a loyal warrior. But I have to remember that I'm not only choosing a deputy, I'm choosing the cat that might be the next leader of ThunderClan, and somehow, I'm not sure Brackenfur is that cat. He doesn't give any more information than this. What's the difference between Brackenfur and Brambleclaw? Well, according to Leafpool's dream, Brambleclaw is the right choice because he'll keep ThunderClan safe. But why wouldn't Brackenfur do the same? It could be because Firestar was supposed to trust Brambleclaw during the Foxtrap situation, but... Um... Was... was he? How does making him the deputy make an actual difference in that situation? When thinking it over afterwards, Leafpool, who, by the way, famously really hates Brambleclaw in general, if you read the, um, the, the second series, Leafpool and Brambleclaw get along terribly. Anyway, Leafpool thinks to herself, she couldn't ignore the Tabby Tom's courage and warrior skills, and the determination that led his companion cats to the Sundrowned Place and brought them home with the prophecy that saved the clans. He had been chosen by StarClan then, this could be the next paw step they wanted him to take. So the best assumption that we really have is that most of what makes Brambleclaw separately better than Brackenfur is just StarClan's will and StarClan's desires. Brackenfur supports Brambleclaw as deputy. We never see any rivalry between the cats outside of a few sparse scenes where Brambleclaw considers it. Now, after this, Brackenfur is actually more prominent in the Sight, Dark River, and Eclipse than he is in any book of the New Prophecy, despite him being considered some sort of vague rival to Brambleclaw. He has a scene where he makes j Paw like him by letting an apprentice wander around in the woods by himself, and Firestar gives him Hollypaw when she quits being a medicine cat apprentice, as opposed to Brightheart, who only got j Paw to begin with because she's partially blind and never gets an apprentice again even though Firestar promises her one. As Hollypaw's mentor, he's a guy who runs around and expects her to keep up, and expects Hollypaw to make the difference in being behind in her training largely on her own. Maybe that's why it took Whitepaw two years to graduate. This is a joke. Brackenfur isn't that bad a mentor. Whitepaw takes two years to graduate because one, the authors forgot, and two, she was quote-unquote waiting for Birchpaw. When Hollypaw questions the morality of attacking her kin in ShadowClan, Brackenfur reassures her that loyalty to her own clan is more important. He eventually gets impatient with her and tells her to stop thinking about the warrior code and start following it. Later, when Cinderpaw breaks her leg, Brackenfur asks repeatedly if she's going to die. He eventually needs to be told to leave. Even though he gets annoyed, Hollypaw mentions that he never loses his temper with her. He takes notice when something's upsetting her. And he's also the one to notice that Ashfur is training Lionpaw way too hard and stops them. Despite this, when Ashfur goes missing, he insists that Ashfur didn't have any quarrels with ThunderClan cats. He doesn't think of the weirdly hard way he trained his apprentice or the fact that they were caught continuing this after Lionblaze became a warrior. He comes along on the journey to find Soul. He is definitely, um, there for that. He sure does show up a lot in, in that journey. To be Brackenfur. <laughs> after his daughter Honeyfern is killed by a snake, he comforts her mate Barry Nose. It says, as gently as if he were Barry Nose's father, Brackenfur nudged him to his paws and led him away, and then nodded to Leafpool. Which is sweet, as Barry Nose doesn't really have one to begin with. From this point out, Brackenfur is largely just... around. There's a vaguely fun scene from Fading Echoes where Lionblaze is considering his clanmates who could be tempted by the Dark Forest. He says about Brackenfur, Brackenfur? The Golden Warrior twitched his flank. No way. What weakness could Tigerstar exploit in him? Brackenfur has more kittens in Fading Echoes, and then in Dovewing Silence, Sorreltail is found dead, and Brackenfur hesitates to let anyone take her body away. This sticks with Brackenfur going into Bramblestar's Storm. The most emotion he showcases in basically the whole series is all within this book in particular. I mean, not counting Graystripe's vow, which I'll get into later. Brackenfur nodded, his eyes clouding. I can't bear knowing she needn't have died, he muttered. If only she'd let Jayfeather treat her wounds straight after the battle. But she insisted on taking care of our kits first, and then it was too late. 
She was a great warrior, a brilliant mother, Ramblestar meowed. None of us will forget her. Every leaf and every blade of grass reminds me of her, Brackenfur told him, his voice steady. I know she's watching over me and her kits from StarClan. One day we'll meet again, he paused, then added quietly. I would wait forever to see her face once more. Bramblestar nodded, too full of emotion to speak. He ran ahead to give Brackenfur a few moments alone with his memories. Later in the same book, when one of his daughters drowns, he says, How can I bear this? Brackenfur asked hoarsely. To lose her mother and now this? He seems to regain his confidence by the end of the book, although we don't see any real transition. After this, he's used sparingly, but still listed as a warrior throughout A Vision of Shadows. Twigpaw notes at some point that he's good at den repairs. This is something that he does throughout Omen of the Stars and Bramblestar Storm as well, so it's nice to see something like that shine through even though he's not a heavily utilized character by the new team. As of Lost Stars and Squirrel Flight's Hope, Brackenfur and his sister Brightheart are in the Elder's Den alongside her mate Cloudtail. Their brother, Thornclaw, remains a warrior for one more series, however. Additionally, he does almost nothing for the rest of the books. In the most recent arc, he's seen accidentally making Nightheart upset with him by trying to encourage him, but that's all. His only other real notable moment is in Greystripe's Vow, where it's repeated that he's Greystripe's apprentice, but no attention is given to the fact that largely he was Greystripe's neglected apprentice. Greystripe asks him if he thinks Thunderclan is the same Thunderclan as before, and the book says... Brackenfur stared at him, looking even more confused. Of course it's the same clan, he replied. I know what you mean, Greystripe. When the clan's in the middle of such a crisis, and especially when we've lost so many of our clanmates from those times... His voice shook a little, and Greystripe guessed that he was remembering his mate, Sorreltail, who had been killed in the Great Battle, or his best friend, Dustpelt, who had worked with him in securing the camp and weatherproofing the dens. But their kin still live on he continued more firmly. And though Bramblestar is a different kind of leader from Firestar, he was still a good leader before the imposter drove him out of his body. You mustn't let these temporary problems get you down, he told Greystripe, resting his tail tip for a moment on the other elder's shoulder, a gesture that irked Greystripe, even though he knew that his clanmate meant to be reassuring. We'll sort it out sooner or later. We always do. While the books had paired Brackenfur and Dustpelt a few times, the idea that they would be best friends is a bit surprising, with Dustpelt being written as someone who's not really on quote-unquote Team Firestar in the same ways, within the past sections of even the same book. Brackenfur has always been so good and genuine that you would think he would highly disagree with a lot of Dustpelt's inclinations. That said, this book characterizes Brackenfur differently. It remembers he builds dens, sure, but this behavior is completely out of line with everything we've seen of him previously. Not the den-building thing, but his behavior. When, in the past section, Greystripe is considering helping Gremlin, Brackenford doesn't respond with caution or worry. He gets mad. Past Brackenford, not Thornclaw, not Dustpelt, yells at Greystripe. Just like that, Brackenford responded, his shoulder fur beginning to rise with indignation. You're considering making a deal with the cat from Blood Clan, the cats who almost destroyed the whole forest, and you want us to stroll back into camp as if nothing has happened? Nothing has happened. Not yet, Greystripe pointed out. And I only told Gremlin I would think about her offer. I haven't promised her anything. Brackenfur let out an angry snort. You shouldn't even have done that. If I were you, I would have sent her back to the two-leg place with a few scratches to remember me by... I have no idea why they chose Brackenfur for this. It's not like he isn't defensive of the border, or even that he may feel this way. It's the idea that he would respond with anger. It's surreal. He continues on a bit later with, We only have her word for it that Bloodclan would take her kits away. Brackenfur retorted. Puffing out his breath, he continued, Graystripe, you were my mentor. I've always trusted you. I thought Firestar made the right decision when he left you in charge of the clan, but now... I think you must have bees in your brain. This bit bothers me the most. Not only does Brackenfur openly insult Greystripe, but he's bringing up Greystripe's mentorship like it's something that was smooth or it would instill any sort of trust in him at all, but Greystripe abandoned his apprentice repeatedly during that time, and a large portion of his training was done by Fireheart, Mousefur, or Running Wind as a substitute. It feels written completely without thought for the past. The past that if he had brought it up or referenced it, might actually make the anger he's harboring towards Greystripe or the distrust in his decision-making make any sense at all. 
And this isn't even the end of it. Not to read all of these passages, but it's just so frustrating that they even exist with the rest of Brackenfur also existing. This plan will end with us all turned into crow food. The speaker was Brackenfur. The golden brown tabby tom, usually so calm and reasonable, was standing stiff-legged at the base of the high rock. Eyes blazing in rage as he glared up at Graystripe. I'm sorry, Graystripe. I always trusted you as a mentor, but you wouldn't have asked me to keep it a secret if you thought it was really the right thing to do. I heard what Gremlin told you, and I can't believe that you would trust her as far as I could throw a fox. You just want to take another stray into the clan, and in doing that, you'll end up destroying us all. It just feels weird. Even the book says he's usually calm and reasonable this time, which is true. It's true of every other appearance he's ever had. The comment about wanting to take another stray into the clan especially seems wildly out of character for him when he's a character who seems particularly accepting of others. It's just, just wild. I know at this point I'm caught between two conflicting ideas. Sure, there's a desire there for Brackenfur to be mad, or even acknowledge that he was blown off and neglected by Greystripe as a kid, but that doesn't ever happen. It's never really brought up after Brackenfur graduates. But Brackenfur getting mad at him for some other reason, and especially something as strange as Greystripe choosing to trust a pregnant and worried Blood Clan queen, feels completely off. If he's going to be infinitely placid and kind throughout his life, and is so predictable that you think you could look at him and say, this is a character that would never get messed up by Vicky leaving, all he does is say the right thing and the best thing he can every time. When something bad happens, he is sad, and when something good happens, he is happy. He is a good kitty who goes on all the patrols. What would motivate them to put this character in this scene? Meanwhile, we've got a whole handful of other characters that could have taken this role in the story with no problem. Thornclaw, Dustpelt, Longtail, even Brambleclaw would have made more sense. But anyway, Brackenfur is a guy. He is just a guy. He loves his wife. He loves his clan. He loves, um, his wife. He's just a stock good guy. He's the default good warrior, and in a lot of the same ways that his brother Thornclaw is, like, the stock angry guy, the stock tough warrior. And that sort of thing is why I'm more interested in, like, his descendants possibly becoming deputy than I would have been him if he were still a warrior. He had his chance, he blew it by Leafpool having a dream, but he would just be too generic to be interesting beyond it just being vaguely satisfying. Well, that and the fact that a lot of the cats in ThunderClan are either related to Brackenfur, Firestar, or both, and it would be nice to see someone who's not related to Firestar show up. As a warrior, he's a good guy. As a father, he's a good guy. As a mentor, eh, he runs a little bit too fast. As a mate, he's a good guy. As a deputy, apparently he would have done a good job. Would he have been a good leader? According to Firestar, that's a nebulous and unknowable no. Anyways, this is a mini-talking, so I won't be taking any voted suggestions on the end of this one. See you guys next week!